May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We heard those beautiful words from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And don't we all need a bit of light right now? And I know I am quite grateful that the days are all getting, already getting a bit longer, one day at a time. And I continue to greatly appreciate those mornings that I can get out and walk and can actually see and feel the sunrise and the light. Today, as we observe the Feast of the Epiphany and enter this season of Epiphany, we know that the word Epiphany simply means showing or shining forth, revealing. Divine light shows forth from the Christ child. In him is a revealing of God. This divine light that shines forth from and through the child is not a light foreign to this earth. It is the light at the heart of all life. It is the light through which all things have come into being. The light at the heart of everything. The light at the heart of you the light at the heart of me, at the heart of all creation. And there is a story of the burning bush in the Hebrew scriptures in which Moses sees a bush on fire, but it is not consumed. And he turns aside to look at this great sight. And some believe that the important thing about this story is not that the bush is burning, but that Moses notices. Because every bush is burning, every bush is on fire with the divine presence. Everything in all creation shines because God is at the heart of it all. And so our epiphany story invites us to open our eyes to the glimpses of this light that surrounds us. This light, this light that the Magi find is a threat to the most powerful man in Judea because this light at the heart of all life is not just for some, not just for certain people. Any powers or power structures that favor only some rather than serving all is a false power and feels threatened by the shining of true power. The power of love, the power of the light, life, and love of God the light which shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. January 6th, the actual date of the Feast of the Epiphany. And for many, Three Kings Day, a day of festive gathering with family and friends, gifts, food, and fantastic music. And many years ago, when we were visiting my in-laws at the time in Puerto Rico, our children actually had their picture taken with the three kings at the mall. It is a wonderful and joyous time. And we all have family and friends who have birthdays on January 6th. So I have actually been angry when this date has seemed to be taken over as a day marked by violence and a threat to democracy. When presiding Bishop Michael Curry preached from Washington DC this past Thursday, he called on Christians to reclaim the spiritual light that this feast day celebrates, 
and to reject the deeper darkness shown in last year's attack on the Capitol. Epiphany at its deepest roots is about the light and life and love of God he preached. And what happened here a year ago in this country that we love was not about light and love and life. And we are better than that. And we must declare it. We are part of this light and love and life of God. And we are called to shine for the healing of this world. And it is in nurturing our relationships with our God and with each other that we are sustained and strengthened to do this healing work. And we do not do this work alone, <clears throat> but we must start with ourselves, preparing our hearts and saying yes to the light, life, and love of God, even if we are not sure where that yes may lead us next but trusting in that light, life, and love of God. The church <clears throat> has a custom of blessing homes on the Feast of the Epiphany and the weeks following. Family and friends can gather to ask God's blessing on their homes and those who live in or visit them. And home is wherever the heart is. This is an invitation for Jesus to be a daily guest in our home, our comings and goings, our conversations, our work, our rest, our joys, our sorrows. And one traditional way of doing this is to use chalk, blessed during the liturgy of the Feast of the Epiphany, to write a code of holy graffiti above the home's entryway. And Europeans have chalked their doors as part of Epiphany house blessings for centuries. And for this year, this holy graffiti would look like this. 20 plus C plus M plus B plus 22. And the letters C, M, B have two meanings. They are the initials of the traditional names of the three Magi, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. And they also abbreviate the Latin words Christus Mansionem Benedicat. May Christ bless the house. And the plus signs represent the cross, and 2022, the year. And we ask for this blessing throughout the year. And marking the doorway to one's home is rooted in the Hebrew scriptures, with, which remind us that God has at times commanded God's people to mark their doors. The Israelites marked their doors with the lamb's blood on the night of the Passover. And a similar command was given in the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And so this morning we will bless this chalk with a prayer from the Book of Occasional Services. And I invite anyone here today or who's coming after the service or in the coming weeks to take an envelope, which will have a piece of this blessed chalk and the prayer and to mark your home. Again, home being wherever your heart is. And so now,
We will ask for God's blessing. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. The Lord be with you and also with you. And let us pray. Loving God, bless this chalk which you have created that it may be helpful to your people and grant that through the invocation of your holy name, all who use it in faith to write upon the doors of their homes and names of your saints, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, may receive health of body and protection of soul for all who dwell in or visit their home through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as you take this chalk and mark the lintel of your front door or your front porch step, you can offer the prayers, which is, in, which is included in here. The Magi, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar followed the star of God's Son, who became human 2,022 years ago. May Christ bless our home and remain with, uh, with us throughout the year. Visit, O blessed Lord, this home with the gladness of your presence. Bless all who live or visit here with the gift of your love and grant that we may manifest your love to each other and to all whose lives we touch. May we grow in grace and in the knowledge and love of you. Guide, comfort, and strengthen us in peace, O Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. And arise, shine, for our light has come. Amen.